Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. Oh my gosh, we got so many stories today. Seven big ones. We got Ubisoft being stupid. We got news on GoldenEye 007. We got news on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Oh my gosh, do we have a ton of news on that. We got something to do with a Square Enix IP coming to Nintendo Switch. Bandai Namco... <laughs> I might have gotten hacked over here. Uh, and, oh, and by the way, uh, maybe there's a Nintendo Direct coming this month. Oh my gosh, we have a lot to talk about. So, before we jump in, I want to remind you that we are on our road to 80,000 subscribers. And when we hit 80,000 subscribers, we are going to make a brand new giveaway. That giveaway is going to include a replica Hylian Shield, a replica Deku Shield, and a life size steel blade master sword based on the design from breath of the wild i am so stoked to get that giveaway going but it doesn't start now you can't enter now first you just gotta subscribe we gotta get to 80k and then we will begin that giveaway let's jump right into the news by the way uh before we do the stories timestamps we timestamp everything if you're not aware of that you could just skip to the stories you care about. And hopefully you want to watch all the stories because we're starting off with a banger right away. Now, you guys might remember that GoldenEye 007 was supposed to be releasing on Xbox, maybe even Nintendo Switch at some point this year. We know this because there were Xbox achievements on the official Xbox.com website. And these achievements were new achievements that have never previously existed for GoldenEye. On top of that, we know Nintendo obviously uh, did a little bit of a lawsuit thing in Germany. Oh, maybe a lawsuit isn't really the right way to call it. They, they requested that Germany would overturn a previous ruling on GoldenEye they had back in the 90s to allow the game to release in Germany, showing that Nintendo actually still holds some rights to the game, which is where you get into the whole, hey, if Microsoft's going to have it, maybe Nintendo's going to have it. Anyways, we haven't really gotten this announced, and a lot of people have a presumption on why it's not being announced. Jeff Grubb actually gives us uh, some deeper insight to, I guess, reaffirm or confirm a lot of the gut feelings we had. And uh, here is what he had to say uh, about GoldenEye coming to Switch and or Xbox. GoldenEye is still in limbo because of the war. So uh, that's basically what most of us thought, like, because... GoldenEye has a major Russian theme in it. There's a war going on involving Russia. Uh, that's probably why it was delayed. But more than that, he says one verse 100 Steam uh, lead left Microsoft. I don't know what that means for the game. That's obviously dealing with Microsoft there. So that is really the, the update. It's not much, but it's more. Jeff Grubb is well known in the industry. He's an industry veteran. He's a journalist. He does have some connections. So if he's saying that it's because of the war, it's probably what he's heard from Microsoft directly. So next up, we get to talk about Ubisoft because Ubisoft is busy being a dumbass. Actually, that's that, that, that's maybe a bit too harsh. They're just kindly, ever so kindly reminding us of why Internet connections and online releases and DLC that's only downloadable all that stuff, they're just sort of reminding us, digital purchases, why there is a massive pitfall to it. And unfortunately, a decision they have now announced is going to affect, well, a ton of their really popular games. Even if you own them physically, you will be negatively impacted in some way. Let's get right to the news, and I'm getting this right off of IGN. Ubisoft to shut down multiplayer and online services for 15 games in September of 2022. Ubisoft is set to shut down multiplayer and online services for 15 games on September 1st of 2022, including five Assassin's Creed games, Far Cry 3, Splinter Cell Blacklist, Prince of Persia, The Forgotten Sands, and more. For games like Assassin's Creed 3, which was a 2012 release, and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, the installation of access to DLC will be unavailable on that date. Closing the online services for some older games allows us to focus our resources on delivering great experiences for players who are playing newer and more popular titles, Ubisoft wrote on its support page. The full list of games and what services will be stopped is as follows. Assassin's Creed 2, PC and PlayStation 3, you will be unable to play multiplayer, Link Ubisoft accounts in-game or use online features. Assassin's Creed 3, a 2012 release. Uh, the 2012 release, they're noting because there's been like a remaster since then. Uh, PC, you will be unable to play multiplayer. Link Ubisoft accounts in-game or use online features. 
Additionally, the installation and access to downloadable content will be unavailable as well, because that's always great. PlayStation 3, Wii U, Xbox 360, you will be unable to play multiplayer or Ubisoft like accounts in-game or use online features. So you still get DLC on those platforms, but that's about it. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. You will be unable to play multiplayer, link Ubisoft accounts in game or use online features. Additionally, the installation access to DLC will be unavailable. Same basic thing for PlayStation 3, except you'll still have access to DLC. Uh, Assassin's Creed Liberation HD on PC, you'll be unable to link the accounts. You have online features, DLC unavailable. You're kind of getting the, the idea here. Uh, for PC, you're getting doubly screwed because you're losing access to DLC, whereas the consoles don't seem to be losing that access. Assassin's Creed Revelations for PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, you'll be unable to play multiplayer or use online features. Uh, Driver San Francisco, you'll be unable to play multiplayer or link Ubisoft Ubisoft content game, uh, use online features. The installation access to DLC will be unavailable. Again, same difference with PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, but, you know, you'll still have DLC. Far Cry 3, the 2012 release, the exact same thing is happening. Uh, and then Tom Clancy, Ghost Recon, Future Soldier uh, will say the multiplayer for the game will be unavailable to play the solo campaign. You'll have to set your console in offline mode. So imagine that you're on PlayStation 3 and you boot up Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon. You can't even play the solo mode without shutting off the Internet. That's how stupid that is. What? Ubisoft, just release a patch for the game. My Lord. Prince of Persia, The Forgotten Sands. Again, same thing. You won't be able to do anything online, including DLC downloads. Rayman Legends for PlayStation 3, Wii U, and Xbox 360. You'll be unable to link Ubisoft against the game or use online features. Silent Hunter 5. Same thing, except on PC, except you also lose access to DLC. Space Junkies for the HTC Vive and Oculus. As a multiplayer-only title, you'll be unable to play the game going forward. So Space Junkies, goodbye. You just no longer exist. Splinter Cell Blacklist. You will be unable to play multiplayer, link Ubisoft accounts in game, or use online features. PlayStation 3 is the exact same thing. Zombie U. Oh man, that's such a great game for Wii U. You will be unable to link Ubisoft accounts in game or use online features. Notably, Zombie U is ported to uh, Xbox One and such, and so that'll still work there. Important to note that the remastered versions of Far Cry 3 and Assassin's Creed 3 will not be shut down. Ubisoft did a similar move in 2021, shutting down multiplayer functionality and online services for games such as Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas. Rainbow Six Vegas 2, Rainbow Six Lockdown, Far Cry 2, and Splinter Cell Conviction, a.k.a. they keep doing this, and they're just, this is the biggest batch, I guess, they've done so far. This is obviously massively concerning in the video game industry, not just because uh, I don't expect multiplayer support, I suppose, to go forever, and it's always disappointing when you're going to lose your multiplayer support. But what bothers me are the wide swath of games losing access to DLC, specifically on PC. Why is PC specifically being targeted for, sorry, you can't access DLC anymore? A lot of the DLC, especially in Assassin's Creed games, is single player content. And now you're just going to lose access to it, which, by the way, doesn't matter if you own the game physically or digitally, this stuff still affects you, right? It still affects you whether you own the game physically or digitally. Uh, there's one game, obviously, for Oculus and, 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 and you know, that the VR stuff that's just not going to exist anymore. Like, that's just sad. So if you have that game, uh, make sure you back it up somewhere because it's just going to vanish. Oh, and you know what also really, really sucks? You know what also really, really sucks? How about being told that you can still play the single player in a certain game, but you have to make sure your console isn't connected online or it's going to trigger an online check that's going to prevent you from playing the single player. Who the hell designs their games that way? Ubisoft. So look. I really enjoy Ubisoft games over the years, and I'm looking forward to Sparks of Hope, but this is the reality of the online world. Anything that's available online through these games is not going to be available online forever, and that includes additional content. Uh, it would be nice if they would just re-release games that have all the additional content included so it'll be available forever in one single package. Uh, they're not saying you can't re-download your game digitally. They're not saying you're losing the downloads of the game. You're just losing everything else. It's it, it's a sad day, and Ubisoft just reminds us how scary the world we live in is now. Because uh, this is one of the largest major game shutdowns we have seen from any of the companies, and this is this is indeed scary. Uh, and it makes you wonder, you know, when I get a decade from now, how many of the games I own today are just going to be unplayable because companies no longer want to support the online because so much of it's tied to online. You own an Xbox, I mean, gosh, imagine. Xbox is almost exclusively tied to online, so when they decide to stop supporting that, what then? Maybe you won't care because you'll be on to the next thing, but for those that want to go back, 
It's a pretty big deal. Next up, uh, we have to talk about Bandai Namco because it appears Bandai Namco has been hacked. Yes, I'm not kidding you. Let's take a look. So here we are in Nintendo Life. It says video game publisher Bandai Namco appears to have been hacked reportedly in the latest victim of a ransomware attack. Major video game cyber attacks have been quite popular in recent years, and it seems Bandai Namco is the latest victim. Ransomware group Black Cat has added the Japanese publisher and developer known for the series Pac-Man, Dragon Ball, and Elden Ring to its list of victims. The group that monitors malware source code online, known as VX Underground, was the first to spot this and share the information on social media. The same source has previously reported on other attacks, like the NVIDIA one, before it was officially confirmed. So this person has a pretty good track record of reporting on leaks before it hits the major outlets. And it says Alpha V Ransomware Group, alternatively referred to as Black Cat Ransomware Group, claims to have ransomed Bandai Namco. Bandai Namco is an international video game publisher. Bandai Namco video game franchises include Com uh, Ace Combat, Dark Souls, Dragon Ball, Soul Calibur, and more. Uh, Bandai Namco also is a company that helped work on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So they could have source files for that floating around their company too. Black Cat has reportedly been ramping up ransomware attacks over the past year and has previously shared private employee data online. That's always the worst uh, when victims refuse to comply. So that is one of their major tactics is, hey, you don't comply with us. We're going to release personal information. Uh, that's kind of shitty, but yeah, this includes demands for millions of dollars. It's unknown at this stage the extent of the latest incident. Some of the biggest attacks on video game companies in recent years include Nvidia Leaks, CD Projekt Red, EA, and fellow Japanese company Capcom, which saw the reveal of a number of unannounced games had it released. I'm also surprised they didn't talk about Nintendo themselves had a massive leak like three years ago. So Nintendo isn't immune to any of this either. So this is obviously it, you never want to see um, hacks go through like this because obviously it means a lot of data, your data and employee data is at risk. Also, it's one thing if a group of people do this just to prove a point uh, and then they give the information back like, hey, your security sucks ass and they want to prove a point. But that's not what a lot of these ransomwares are doing. They're called ransomwares for a reason. They want to ransom. They're asking for millions of dollars and they're not afraid to share information. Now, will these people be caught someday? Will they be put in federal prison? Will they have to deal with severe consequences? Maybe. Maybe if they're ever caught, then yes. Some of the best hackers in the world don't get caught. So it's going to be really interesting to see if Ben and Amco pays up uh, or if they're just going to say, screw it, release all of our personal information, which is, you know, that that that's never that's never good. So I I'm very concerned on what what this means moving forward. Uh, this company is clearly targeting the video game realm hard. Uh, while it's cool that we might get some interesting things out of these leaks, uh, and yeah, we'll probably cover if there's like any game announcements or anything. We have to at least note at this time that one, we don't condone this, this action. And two, anytime that you're going to do this, but you're doing it for profit with the threat of revealing personal information. I, I think that's just a super, super shitty thing to do. Uh, and it, you know, it's one thing that they wanted to hack just to find out information on games. But that's, that's not the end goal here. The end goal is they want to be paid millions and millions of dollars and get rich quick. And uh, that sucks. Anyways, folks, let's get on to our next story. So it appears a classic Square Enix RPG is coming to Nintendo Switch. And of course, we're talking about Saga Frontiers 2 because it has now been listed for Nintendo Switch online. Here we go. Let's take a look. So this comes from Nintendo Life and it says it looks to be another remaster. Square Enix is pumping out new and old RPGs on a regular basis with games like uh, the Diofield Chronicle and Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII to look forward to later this year. If these games weren't already exciting enough, it seems yet another classic could be getting a remaster. As spotted on Twitter, uh, my account Asian Game Prince via Nintendo Everything, a listing has recently appeared on Play Asia, a very popular site for buying things uh, overseas in the U.S. Originally released by SquareSoft on the PlayStation in 1999 slash 2000, this includes a listing for the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4 with the official release date scheduled for next month on the 25th of August. So this is coming up quick and maybe this is something that we get put in a Nintendo Direct. I don't know what I'm just saying. Here's Play Asia's description. Sonic Frontiers 2. Oh, Sonic Frontiers. Oh my gosh. Sega Frontier. No, see, I still got a Sega and Sonic. It's on my brain, guys. I literally was looking at a poster for that game today. Saga Frontiers 2 includes. Oh my God, I can't even. So All right. 
Saga Frontiers 2 introduces a complete renovation of the RPG genre. Traditional computer polygonal fixtures are replaced with lush, hand-drawn watercolor graphics, supported by awe-inspiring musical score. Blending both freedom and linearity, this title utilizes the multi-scenario system, giving players unparalleled freedom in choosing which scenario they want to play, while other scenarios crisscross with one another. Complementing this feature are three innovative battle modes, Duel, Team, and Strategic. Depending upon the model selected, the player can control an individual character, a team, or several units to fight in battles, bringing depth and precision to the combat sequences. So Enix has made an effort to build this classic RPG series back up in recent years, with the last year seeing the arrival of Saga, not Sonic, Saga Frontier Remastered on Nintendo Switch. So wouldn't be shocking for the second one to come out, since they already did the first one. It's obviously... Really cool news, and I'm I'm super stoked that uh, it appears we're getting this game. The well, first one was pretty good. The second one's pretty good. So let's go and move on to our next story. So Nintendo did something interesting today. They dropped a new Kirby game. No, I'm serious. They did. It's called Kirby's Dream Buffet. Here, let's have a look. So Kirby's Dream Buffet is arriving this summer, uh, which is interesting because we're already in the middle of summer and we don't have a release date that's weird it's going to be a digital only release and really not a whole lot's known about it beyond this trailer and as this trailer goes on and on and on you're going to see that it seems to definitely be drawing inspiration from another popular game that went free to play on nintendo switch back on june 21st if you haven't guessed by now we're talking about fall guys although it's a little different because this isn't like a hundred players going at it it appears to be limited to maybe four so it's definitely a party style game but you can definitely see as the gameplay is going on here that there is some definite fall guys a level of inspiration it seems like you're trying to get to an end of a level maybe you're trying to eat as many treats as much food as you can along the way and you'll see this because you get to one of the the end screens and at the end screen it's going to be basically you know the fattest kirby wins which is right here uh so it definitely seems to be a unique take anyways on the fall guys formula uh, only with four players, hopefully online. I hope it's an online playable game. If this is only local, that would be disappointing, especially since it's a download only title. We don't know if it's going to be free. They didn't announce any pricing structure with it. We hope it's free uh, because you know these kind of experimental Kirby games I think are a lot of fun and you could you could you could get millions and millions of players day one if it was free. So we'll have to see what Nintendo does. But it was kind of a nice little dessert today. All right. So I need to give a warning right now. We are about to go over a boatload of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet leaks. We can call this a rumor if you want, since I guess I, I can't verify any of this. So I suppose you could say it, it's unverified information, but it's coming from highly reliable leakers and Pokemon games have a tendency to leak like crazy. And you're going to hear a lot of things. So, again, if you want to skip this story, it's going to be quite long. Uh, use the timestamps because this is we're going over all the information because it's out there and this is what we do. So here we go. Let's get into all the leaks and I'm getting all of this information off the central leaks Twitter account because they have it all nicely organized and summarized. But let's let's just let's just do this thing, shall we? Here we go over, over at central leaks. And here's first off the one, uh, the big one from yesterday. And, and all of this came from Ku Riddler Ku. He's, he's a well-known leaker. From France, so the starter uh, final evos are grass, dark, water fighting, fire ghost. Uh, Sprigadio's final evolution has a god tier hidden ability. Uh, will be bipedal and seems like it will be a humanoid slash wafu like. Uh, Quaxley's final evolution is the leaker's favorite design of the three. Legendaries are dragon fighting and dragon electric. There's more than one object mon this gen. There's at least four wa wa wafu, waifu, waifu, I think it's supposed to be waifu, and multiple husbandan, husbandoman, how do you even say that word, according to the leaker? I mean, I can tell I'm not into the, <laughs> those, those, that terminology. There will be new cross-gen evolutions, an evolution for dune space has been hinted, there will be new type combos, a new cool fish Pokemon. The gimmick is related in some way to three types, the gimmick is a new concept of that when referring to the Megas, uh, which we're going to find out later that Mega Evolutions themselves are not in this game. But we'll find that out in a bit here. A regional form for a Bull Pokemon, a regional form for a Water Ground Pokemon. Smolov's Evolution is the regional Grass Female Pokemon. 
Go Goat is back after it haven't appeared in a Pokemon game since 2013. Leaker mentions that there's tons of cool new Pokemon. The regional bug Pokemon will be Japanese themed. Like Sword and Shield, not every previous uh, starter will be in the game. As far as the leaker knows, there will still be some Pokemon after SV, uh, Scarlet Violet, that haven't appeared in any Switch game. Lechonk's evolution will be female looking, but ugly. Something like Perugly, possibly. It has been hinted that the legendaries have five, some, five or something forms. The legendaries are rideable in some way. Note the information marked with the star was revealed via a riddle and hasn't been explicitly stated yet by the leaker. So it could be wrong or slightly wrong because it's an interpretation of a riddle. Uh, and then it says also another note, we try to use the same terms used by the leaker when referring to designs like waifu, husbandando, object mod, so that the message isn't distorted by us, which makes a lot of sense. It's not their terminology. Um, this came out two two hours ago. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Leaks Part 3. The region is called in Japanese Paldia from Pokemon and Aldea Village in Spanish. This is a rough translation. The original Japanese text is in the attached image. Mega evolutions are not bad. That's where I was noting the mega evolutions are not in the game. So here's the, the uh, I don't know in English. And this is the Japanese. All right. Uh, Dune Space has a new evolution. There's a new dolphin Pokemon. Uh, Murkrow has a new evolution. Regional Dex is more than 400. Uh, Fukoko Final Evolution is still an alligator. No new fossil Pokemon. Yesterday images already include two of the evolved starters. Hint of the gimmick. So, I don't know, the skull and bones thing there maybe is a hint of a gimmick. Uh, new Flamingo Pokemon, not all... Hisuian Pokemon are in the game. The gimmick doesn't involve Pokemon getting an extra type. There are side quests in the game. Uh, Tadius, Kamala, Rotom, Gudra, and Sunflora are in the game. Sorry if I butcher any of the Pokemon names. Uh, Woobat is not. There are four pseudo-legendary Pokemon. Well, he goes on to, to, I think, to clarify that later. But there are four pseudo-legendary Pokemon. Note about the four pseudo. This is the exact original leak. Can a native speaker verify? So that's the exact leak right there. Uh, all Pokemon can use the new gimmick. Lugia slash Ho Ho are not in. When asked about the champion, the leaker said both male slash female. When asked the gender, so maybe versions ex exclusive champions perhaps. Um, Dune Sparace, Evo does not fly. Apom to Canon are not in. Uh, Miss Drevious is in. There is no new Dodrio form. Uh, Corridon and Miradon do not have five forms. Furfo, Squavit, Minior are not in the game. Uh, I believe that he meant game with the G missing. Can't edit it on Twitter, unfortunately. Houndor Line is in the game. Uh, Weezing is in the game. This is a he slash him. And correcting the previous point, it's not four. Yeah, there you go. So it's not four pseudo legendary Pokemon, but a group of four legendaries. So there you go. Uh, another correction: Skullwat, Skullwat is in the game. Okay, we previously said it wasn't. That was incorrect. The leaker said that the Gen Nine starters are the only starters in the game, at least in the main adventure. You know, could be transfer capabilities. Looks like Wigglytuff may be getting a regional form, but hasn't been explicitly stated by the leaker. The new gimmick. You can transform any Pokemon into that crystallized look by using a new item that looks like a ball that Nimona gives you. Gen 5 Pokemon gets a new evolution. Okay, so there is that. We're not done, though. You think we'd be done, but we are not. So this one see, it says, uh, it now seems highly likely that this is Spragadio's evolution. The leaker specifically mentioned two of the Pokemon leaked yesterday are the evolved starters. And yeah, this one. And I think there was a, a tweet that said, can you imagine? Yeah, right here. We can you can see if that's maybe the top of that Pokemon. But obviously that is a guess because this image doesn't include the full shot. All right. Uh, let me just double check and make sure there was no other leaks that were that were missing here. Here we go. One, again, another batch here it says new Pokemon Scarlet and Violet leaks from today's new source. There are no new EV evolutions. Joltik, Militic, Whale Lord, Metagross, Jinx, and Golark are not in the game. Pokemon will time travel. So time travel's in the game? Confirmed? The player will not, however. So Pokemon can time travel, but the player can't. It says that the story is very good, whatever that means. There will be three cities and nine towns in the region. So that's 
That's a decent amount right there. I wonder how big the towns are. 300 to 500 Pokemon in the regional decks. Garchomp is in the game. Whatever the comment in the image means, that was when asked if the Gen 5 starters were in the game, but I think we now know that no, the only starters in the game are from it. The source also insists that there will be DLC, which, I mean, of course there was going to be DLC. Uh, this was apparently also posted by the same source. So another image here. So there, there's that. Um, why there's things cut out, I don't know. Maybe this is protecting copyrights or trying not to get the image claimed. Um, yo, official art just dropped. Just It was just me. So that was, that's obviously fake leaks. Um, another leak from the apparent source that, that no longer exists. Wooper gets a poison type. It evolves into a brand new Pokemon. Oh, and then this. So this is the one I wanted to bring up um, because this pointed out some gym leaders. I looks at the images of different characters from the game are leaking the internet, and, and these are supposedly some of the gym leaders. I know it's going to be a little bit blurry, uh, but yes, yeah, so I wanted to make sure that we got to these as well because this is one of the first leaks we had yesterday were gym leaders. Um, so we got more here as well. Supposedly gym leaders are, are here, which you know sort of confirms gym leaders. So there's that. Now that was a lot of information to chew on, and if you would like to continue the conversation on this, I highly encourage you join our Discord server because we have literally a gaming leaks section on our Discord server where you can go and freely talk about leaks without worrying about spoiling things for people uh, because that channel literally is labeled leaks. You should not be in there talking about game leaks if you are not interested. All right, and then we need to get to our final story. And our final story deals with the fact we might be getting a Nintendo Direct this month. My lord, this is a long episode, isn't it? Woo! Let's go! So, this comes from none other than Peter Schneider, the co-founder of IGN. On the Nintendo Voice Cat, uh, Nintendo Voice Chat, what, whatever, that Nintendo podcast they have, last week, late last week on Thursday, he dropped this little nugget that he wanted everyone to know about a potential Nintendo Direct in July. I've heard that there is a first party Direct in July as well, and I don't know if it's true. No, stop, don't do this. <laughs> there was a there. whole thing. There was a I... thing where Sir Ken Toto, who is known for being a Nintendo knower, yes. did a too early, and then Takashi Mochizuki, who covers it for Bloomberg, did the eyeball emoji. That's right. Peter Schneider just said he has sources that are saying there's going to be a first-party Nintendo Direct this month. Now, he doesn't tell us when. I know there's been a lot of speculation on, on, on stuff this week. You speculate away. But uh, he's saying that it's going to be a thing that happens. I Look, do with that information what you will. I am getting a little bit exhausted. I've been here a long time for this episode. So uh, we're going to kind of call it there. But I do want to speculate more on the Nintendo Direct. And I think we'll just do that this week on our own podcast. So be sure to tune in on Wednesday, because we, uh, tomorrow at 8 p.m. Central Time, because we're going to have Andre's Restart on and Nintendo Academy along with Eric and myself, so it's going to be a jam-packed four-person episode because we got to talk this Nintendo Direct, we got to talk Pokemon leaks, we got to talk a lot, so uh, we'll obviously note during the podcast when we're about to get into spoiler territory for Pokemon leaks, but uh, yeah, anyways, I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!